Um, if you're um, struggling with sin and you're trying to repent, you're trying to um, um, escape the corruption of the world, um, uh, praise God first of all, and uh, God bless you for for uh, understanding the truth out there. And um, but um, you want to make sure you take the right approach um, because. Um, there's ways to do this that's really wrong and it'll discourage you and uh, really discourage you and that's what I did was I was trying to give up some sins and I couldn't I would go for a couple weeks and not do something wrong or something and you know I was in bondage to certain things and I couldn't break free and I really couldn't break free and I just finally gave up I said I'm sorry but that's just the way I am I, I can't change and it was sad because I it took away my joy and I and I thought um, you know deep down inside I felt like I was um, not going to be saved you know and um, but I just continued to kind of wait on the Lord you know and just wait for and silently pray and just you know Lord please help me and it took years you know for I finally start to see that but um, one of the first steps is to have a correct foundation in Scripture which um, um, is not requires obedience to the truth okay what that means is that you first this first step is to acknowledge in your heart what the truth is for example there's one point in my life I thought it was just too hard for me to be able to give up my sin so I basically said tough I'm gonna have to change you have to kind of toughen up you know it's like you know when you don't want to go to work you get up and you go, I don't want to go to work I don't want to go to work you know but you gotta to go to work you know so you gotta change your attitude that's one of the first steps uh, another step is that you have to read the scriptures study it really carefully so that you understand the right, right way you know and uh, that's why I'm so adamant about um, the Bible so important um, because it, 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 if you're carnally minded and you're in bondage to sin, how, how are you supposed to escape unless you read the Bible? You're not going to hear directly from God. In, well, you could. I mean, God could you know, jump right in and you know, change you right there in an instant. Okay, But I'm just saying that normally that, that's not how it happens. It happens a slow process and you have to study scripture. And what you got to do is you got to um, understand the fear of God. You've got to understand what's at stake. You can't just get, say, well, I'll try and, well, you know, if you don't understand what's at stake, what's going on, uh, it, it, you'll never change. Um, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So what you need to do is really fully understand the strong meat of the word and not just be a babe in Christ and just kind of scrape at the surface. You need to kind of get deeper and, uh, um, now I know a lot of people teach don't try to change under the power of the flesh I don't teach that I think that's a weak teaching um, you God gave you hands legs eyes feet and a brain okay you're capable of going without sin because Adam and Eve were innocent okay so it's in the head you need to make a change in the head first okay but you still what it really comes down to it is you've got a body and you can control it don't tell me that you can't help but murder somebody right <laughs> i mean that's that's crazy oh i couldn't help it i just murdered a guy whoops murder somebody again no you don't you can control it if you can like for example if you're you're smoking right now you're you're a chain smoker or something and you um had the urge to light up a cigarette you just go ahead and gratify that urge you light up a cigarette because you have the urge but if you if you had the urge to smoke, you could just say, you know what, I, I'm not going to smoke right now. You have that ability to do that because when you're in certain situations where you're not allowed to smoke, you you go without smoking for a while. So, um, so people can go without sinning. People can do that. Don't let anybody deceive you and think, oh, you can't do it under your own power and all this stuff. That's a lie. If you are a Christian, if you truly believe in Jesus, God is able to empower you. And from what I've shown in the 
what I've seen is it's all about the truth. It says in the scripture, the truth will set you free. So it has nothing to do with uh, God possessing your body and making you do the right things and stuff. It's about your heart. It's about what's in your head and your heart, it, your love, and it's about loving the truth, and it's about not fear of God. It's about what's going on in the head. And you totally have that ability to overcome sin. Jesus, who was flesh and bone, just like me, see people go, don't, you know, don't, this stinking flesh is no good. No, your stinking flesh is not stinking. God, this is a temple of God. It's a temple of God. God deems this temple here worthy enough to inhabit it. And uh, uh, Adam and Eve were perfect. Jesus was, you know, until they sinned. Jesus was perfect, but he was in the flesh, just like me, you and me, spirit-filled. You know, one of the things I was doing when I was studying about Jesus was, um, I noticed there's a parallel between Jesus and the Christian. That all the aspects of Jesus seem to be identical to a Christian. And, and there's certain differences, but it's all kind of a line. There's a certain order. It's kind of like that. And this is a parallel order which is the Father and the Son, and then Jesus and us. It's sort of like that. And that relation between the Father and the Son is like our relationship with God, too, or with Jesus, okay? And uh, that, um, what I found was, one of the things I was looking at about Jesus that was missing was he was born of a virgin birth. You know, obviously my mom and dad are both, human beings. God is not my dad. So I thought, okay, that's the difference between Jesus and us. Nope, that's not the difference. Because even though G the Jesus is his only begotten son, because Jesus, you know, he was begotten of the Father, and nobody else is begotten in that same way Jesus was, we can still become sons of God. And that is because we can become born again. When I read, I studied about being born again, I thought, that's it that we're born again so when you're born again you're like jesus and you can go without sin and you can overcome sin now jesus was resurrected but we will be resurrected too some of the things about jesus has not been fulfilled yet in us you know but there's always a symbolism of that for example baptism is a symbolism of resurrection jesus was also baptized and filled with the spirit we were baptized and filled with the spirit jesus read from the scriptures and Jesus studied the scriptures, and Jesus quoted the scriptures. So should we. All that stuff makes sense, doesn't it? So um, have confidence in God, have fear of God in the sense that not like I'm doomed, but like there's hope that you can overcome. Don't look at your own low self-esteem and think, oh, no, not I. Because through his your weaknesses, he is strengthened. He's looking for people that are lowly people to uh, to to bring up because that's his to his glory and so me I'm just the biggest loser um, I can't even tell you how much of a loser I am I mean I'm just not I'm not married never been married um, you know I'm somewhat successful as far as like you know I've got a steady job but um, not much else as far as friends I never a big popular guy or anything like that just not really that high of a self-esteem and all that but I'm confident in God. It's because of God. It's not because of me. I'm just a loser, you know? And so um, it's better to be a loser for Jesus than to be a loser to the world like I was and just trying to please the world and then failing at it. You know, I mean, it's like kind of like that's the way I looked at it. It was like trying to be somebody and I never succeeded at being somebody in the significant in the world. Anyway, my time is going up, but... Um, don't oh another thing is don't like um be like this like people wait till new year's eve or lent or uh wait until tomorrow and all that now is the time to repent not tomorrow that that is definitely carnal thinking you'll never make it that way you have it's about now it's a change of heart now now you may not be able to have instant victory i don't know you know i'm not going to say you can't but if you if you don't have instant victory don't be discouraged. Just continually press on towards that mark. Continue to um, continue to focus on that, and allow God. Pray to God. Allow Him change your heart. Don't be stubborn. Don't be hard-hearted. 
and say, I can't do it, I can't do it. Have faith in God. Remember, that's faith. Our faith is being tested. That's the trial of our faith is if we sin or not. So um, we're all given a different measure of faith. So we're not supposed to look down at other people. We're supposed to just lift them up and encourage them to grow their faith. Okay, We should grow our faith, but, but if other people are, are, are more stronger than others, we're not supposed to intimidate them and say, you repent now and you da, 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 and just get all over the case because they're weak, they're carnal. And Jesus uh, and, and Paul wrote, you know, you're a babes in Christ and you're not even you can't bear the strong meat of the word. So um so get your heart ready to handle some rebuke, chastisement from God. Be obedient in the heart. Um, don't just argue with God's concepts and precepts in your head. Put away that old conversation. It's the, you know all this. But what about this? But what about that? But what about that? Trust in God. He says you're a new creature in Christ. Be a new creature in Christ. Trust in that. And that's you got to just take the step of faith and don't not look at the status quo and say I'm like everybody else. I'm going to be like everybody else. Abraham stepped out. You know. All those people stepped out from the rest of the crowd. That's what true faith is, is when you step out in faith and you say, I don't care what the rest of the world says. You know, people were telling me that I'd have diseases if I quit doing this. Uh, I didn't know what was going to physically happen to me. I went through all kinds of struggles thinking, uh, and I said, you know what, Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I don't care what happens. I don't care if I die. I'm just going to trust you. And if if that happens, then it's your fault because you told me <laughs> You know, you told me not to do this, and I'm not doing it. So I'm going to face the consequences, and He's going to bless you so much for that. And I hope, I hope that you're able to overcome, uh, overcome sin. And I'm sorry for if I've, um, if you've been watching my videos, and I seem to come across as being uh, intimidating or trying to uh, be, you know, forceful or whatever. Anything that's of the flesh, you know. Don't listen to that part of me. There's another part. There's a struggle going on, you know, with me, too. But just listen to what the Bible says. I'm just pointing out to you what the truth is in the Scripture. Leave it up to the Scripture. It's between you and God. And don't take it personal between me and you. I see stuff out there, and it makes me ticked off in the flesh. And also, uh, you know, we can tend to judge people in the flesh. The flesh has already been uh, nailed to the cross. So I don't judge any man, even a Christian, I really don't judge. I just want to help judge them in the sense that, you know, if another one is, is, is in error, I want to help them out. If another one is rebellious, I want to show them that that's not right, what the consequences of that is. And so I'm not trying to attack anybody um, unless you're evil. You know, you're really like a false teacher or false something, and you're going to get it from me. I'm going to expose you for your... Um, your lies and stuff because you're that's you're talking about the flock you know you're trying to lead this flock astray and that's not right okay so if you don't aren't sure of the truth don't teach it then I won't bother you if you're going around telling people there's no such thing as hell you're going around telling me the Bible is filth and blaspheming God's word I'm gonna attack you if you go around saying that you can't lose your salvation no matter what I'm gonna attack you because you don't know what you're talking about but if you're just a regular guy and you're seeking salvation, please do not be offended by what I'm saying because I'm just here to help you and I'm here for the people that are um, that are that have ears to hear the truth and have earnest desire to um, please God. And that can only be done through faith. All right. God bless you.